So this is the big one. Today, we have eight remaining league matches and a three-point gap to the top of the league. We've also got five Europa Conference League group stage games to try and get some extra cash for that transfer window and get ourselves through. That's 13 matches. So buckle up, my friends. This is going to be a bumpy ride. As always, though, if you are enjoying this series, drop a like on the video. That would be most helpful. Really do appreciate it and all that jazz. Let's just jump in. So today, we're starting off against Volarenga. Uh, we are at home, which is something. They're one of the toughest games that we have left to play. I believe we have them and Starbeck still in our running, but it is quite a favourable one. Now, of course, it will still be slightly augmented by the fact that we do have five European fixtures in there. However... Two of those come after the season has finished entirely. So that's only three games we actually have to navigate, which means we are going to have a reasonably nice amount of games with full week gaps in between. Today is not one of those uh, because we've just had the Spartak game. But nevertheless, we're in a good position. And I would argue of the three sides towards the top, ours is probably just ever so slightly the most favorable run-in. However, uh, we'll find out more about that when we actually see that graph at some point. This is going to be um, quite a long one, I suppose. So settle in. I did debate about doing it in two episodes, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's just fun to do a massive bumper episode and keep that flow flowing, eh? What are we looking at here? Now, obviously, Lee Dealey still taking some time to settle in. I'm not expecting miracles from him. I just want to see him link up with the squad, maybe provide a couple of assists and a couple of goals. We are going to have to rely on Kawamoto uh, heavily for the rest of the season. And you never know, maybe even Valdo Bamba could step up. I still want double figures out of him this year. And part of me still thinks he might randomly get it. He'll get like 10 dead on with an XG of 8 million. But I will do a selection of ice just to shuffle some stuff around a little bit. Uh, I'm definitely not putting Gomez if we're going to play him on the right. Uh, I'd rather have Velej there because of that height we have from those set pieces. And he seems to work really nicely. There's a lot of fitness issues and a few yellow cards floating around. But if we can get through one more game, it'll all be dandy. And I think we really just kind of need to at this point. But this is the first day of our destiny, hopefully. Hopefully at the end of today's episode, we'll be celebrating a league title and hopefully qualification for the knockouts of the Europa Conference League. Now, I do realise, of course, that the Europe stuff is a bit of a distraction, particularly with our main goal actually being winning the league. However, we almost can't do the league winning stuff without the European stuff because we'd never be able to fund our league campaigns without the European stuff. So that's why we do have to give it enough credence to win matches, sadly. It's just... It's, it's a necessary evil. I just want to get off to a good start here. This is as good a game as we could really ask for, I suppose. They're a tough side, but we are at least at home. And our home record, for the most part, other than that weird blip at the start of the season, has been pretty exemplary. And hopefully today, even if it has to be a, just be a 1-0 scraped victory, every win we get is an opportunity for both Rosenborg, technically, and also Mulder to drop points in their respective matches. Uh, especially with both of them still competing in Europe. Uh, Rosenborg in the Europa League and Mulder in the Europa Conference League. And we've actually got, um, I think, five sides still playing in European group stages this season, which is kind of mad. Interestingly, Shamrock Rovers actually in the group stages uh, with Mulder and are actually top of their group and have won a game. Amazing. Can't they do that on my other save, please? Dilly scoops one over the top. Nobody there. But actually, no, not nobody there. Dilly's there. So it's through Kawamoto. Good work from Dilly. Nice pick out. I like that. Very tight areas we're working in here. Cornish. Dilly making a little run. Good. Flicks it up. Bamba has to knock this down. Oh, he's gone for goal. It's... I thought that was in. Holy God, Bamba's looping head and nearly looped over the goalkeeper. Well, half time, and you can sort of see what I mean. Eventually, the possession swung back our direction. Uh, they've had a few sort of low rate, low quality shots from distance. Uh, we've not really created much ourselves, and I do wonder if in the second half, we might just step on it a little bit and use that speed of attack a little bit more. Usually, I hold off for that as long as possible, but today is probably going to be needed. Except as things stand, we wouldn't. Srovska set have equalized against Mulder. The gap would remain the same as Velaj's header is over the crossbar. Rosenborg still winning their game, though. So a win here for us could cut the gap back to one point. Bamba. Nice. Kawamoto. Dira. Tons of options in the box here. He has to find one of them. It's so difficult for him. Pulls it back. Rakic! And it's blocked, but this is far more like it. I'll be honest, I thought that looked like a penalty, the second one. I thought... But that, that's a penalty. That's that's a penalty, though. Of course it is. Like, the first one looked like a solid tackle on Dilly, but the second one, I didn't see any touch on the ball from the defender. He's just brought Dilly down. And now Brouchall, and, and it's 1-0 to Volarenga. After all that hard work at the start of the second half, we are just masters of our own demise at this point with idiocy like that. It's not even a tackle. He's just pushed him over. Too many dumb penalties for a team that aren't on a particularly aggressive, like... Oh, hang on. Bamba's throw. Easy one for Bamba. Seriously. Every shot he has hits the post. Well, it's going to be Tromsa nil, Volarenga one. Gave him a penalty. We have plenty of opportunities to score in this game. The fact, that, the fact is, yes, we gave a stupid penalty away. They just do that, apparently. But the fact is, we still should have scored a goal. And we didn't. And too many times this happens. Uh, as now we slip six points off the title race. And it's almost dead within the first match of the... No, no, it's not. It's not. But it is kind of. Like I said last time, positive thoughts 
We're going to try and get our heads down now and try and pull our way back into this. But, uh, I mean, the thing is, we could be sat on 46 points right now. Yes, we wouldn't be any closer to them, but we certainly wouldn't be any further away. And now we've doubled the gap. Part of me feels really dumb, but part of me also really wants to try to pick up this guy, Philip Knudsen, from FC Midtjylland. Look at him. As an advanced... Sorry, not adv as our central midfielder... Because obviously Bamba's useless. Imagine what someone like Philip Knudsen could... Imagine how many chances Philip Knudsen could miss in that midfield. He's just ridiculously good. And he's got good tackling. He's got great passing. He's just a bit of everything. 3.8 to 6.4. He'd want decent wages, but not the biggest. Because he has a release clause. Because why don't the agents tell you that they have a release clause? That seems like... Also, the release clause is higher than the transfer value the agent's just given us. As much as I want him, I feel like that would blow our entire transfer budget on one player. And as good as he could be... That seems like a really irresponsible decision to do, to be honest, at this point. Um, if I could have negotiated it, and I know you can, but you still end up paying more than the release clause when you try to do that. I just don't think that that... If we could have got it for like 4 million, maybe I'd have looked at it. But six, nearly set. that's basically our entire transfer budget for next season, uh, within exception to the wage budget. To me, that's just bad business from us at that point. To rake it in midfield. Runners beyond. Kawamoto is one of them. Can sit back inside. Can he sit through for Dilly? No, he's going to go alone. Kawamoto! Great goal. Really good goal, actually. Kongsvinger nil. Tromsa one. Koki Kawamoto basically does that all by himself. We do have the lead here. Thank goodness for that. Is it still on? Pull it across. Tap. Potentially d is going to shoot, isn't he? Rakic! Oh, it's in off the post. Jesse Rakic, lovely finish. Eighth goal of the year for Rakic. That is a genuinely great goal. Rakic has improved a lot this season. 2-0 Tromsa. Clattering it through. Oh, God. There's a defender there. Keeper's just not even looking the right direction. Oh, dearie me, come on. This feels like another one of these games that's just inevitably going to finish 2 all with an 88-minute equaliser again because we just seem to have completely switched off since the second goal and since their, their goal back. We've just done nothing in this match. Uh, they've changed something, and I cannot figure out what it is because it's not a formation switch. But we just need to defend... Oh, no. Well, if actually, maybe it's going to happen in this one particular attack itself. If we throw away another two-goal lead where we just seem to stop and down tools when taking a two-goal advantage, then they don't deserve to be anywhere near this title. They actually have. Fly into a two-goal lead whilst looking average, honestly. Pretty poor. But then they still haven't really done a lot. And then we gave them a goal back out of nowhere, and then they just took over the game. And the thing is, there was no tactical switch that I could actually see that made them better than us. And it was really difficult to account for because the formation had changed the same. I didn't get any pop-up saying they've looks like they're doing this. They just suddenly got really good and they deserve the goal. Um, but that is just embarrassing, again, from the guys. That's the second time this season they've thrown away a two-goal advantage. I hate to say it, but we just don't look anywhere near as good since Indistad was, has left. And it's exactly what I thought would happen because... We weren't able to replace him with a like-for-like -like player, so we've had to bring in Lee Dilly. I don't have time to work on a tactical situation to try and fit him into this squad because we can't just go, hey, have an advance forward because then we'll just have two people trying to score goals and no one linking the play up for them. Um, it's, yeah, I think the loss of Michael Indestad is probably what's going to cost us the title this season. I mean, it's gone. We're eight points off of it now with six matches to go. It's not happening. Uh, at this rate, we've just got to try and desperately stay in the European places. So the board, well done you, well done. Because the one thing Indestad did was he was strong in the air and he was so good at holding that play up and providing assists for other strikers. 13 assists he'd got by the time that he left. And he wasn't taking corners or free kicks or anything like that. Uh, he was taking aggressive free kicks. But without his influence in this team, it's... It's basically killed our season. Tell you what, right? Sometimes managing this team is a bit like being in charge of a crash. Um, except I'm also one of the toddlers. And that's a problem, <laughs> to be honest. Because when we all throw our toys out of the pram, who's going to pick them back up again? It's time to become the adult in the room. Whips it back across. Tons of bodies in the way. It should be okay. Uh, nope, it's in the back of the net. Because of course it is. It's 1-0 to Napoli. Uh, it's just gone through every single player. Apologies for the lack of face cam just there. It turns out it just died. It's back now. We're all good. I just don't know anymore. Like, we've actually turned up against Napoli here and been brilliant. They've scored one goal from the edge of the box where it goes through everybody, and we just can't seem to score a goal. It's a good sign, as far as performance-wise, against Napoli, but the thing is, if we had any chance of winning this group, we really needed to win that game, and we actually looked like we could win that game. That was really what surprised me the most, was how well we actually played. Not that it mattered, but we did play well. Rakish delivers one. In the snow here. Velez's header. It's in. It's actually in. Roberto Velez with the goal. Well, we do get a 1-0 victory from Robert Velez. The chances, once again, on display for all to see uh, from everybody else, unable to score them. Um, but nevertheless, we do. the defenders do a great job on keeping the clean sheet. And luckily, Velez's like, low-quality chance from a corner actually did get us the win. We still had other opportunities in this one for Dili and Kawamoto and Grumbeck and everybody else. But that just seems to be dead at the moment. Our strike force just isn't linking at all anymore. Uh, Steinberg, yeah. Hansen did okay off the bench, but there you go. We get the victory, and it does take us back above Rosenborg. So at the very least, we do have that. Rosenborg drew nil-nil away at Salzburg. Molde win again. Uh, they're eight points clear with five matches to go. They're going to win the league, um, whether they deserve to or not. The fact is, they do deserve to, because they'll have the most points. That's what it comes down to. I want to make sure, at the very least, we win the XG table. <laughs> you know... <laughs>
that old award um, and make sure that we get second place because Champions League football at this point, we need to get our hammer down. Now, hopefully getting the victory here is going to do wonders for the confidence of the players, but it does just feel like our strike setup has completely gone off now. Uh, Kawamoto can't seem to create chances or score goals or get into positions to score goals anymore uh, ever since the loss of Indistad, really. He has that one goal that we got against Kongsvinger, but he did that all by himself. Other than that, he's been pretty abysmal since the well, since the, uh, the departure, sadly, but we've really got nothing to do but just continue on through the season now with five matches to go. Try to sew up second place. You never know. Maybe Mulder will collapse. You could find spaces here. Dilly. Jonsson. Ball around the side for Valdo Bamba. Can he finish one from this kind of... No, of course not. Rokic scoops another good cross in. Velez's header is on the end of it, and this seems to be the only way we score goals at the moment. Roberto Velez with his 11th goal of the season, and it is 1-0 Tromsa away at Lillstrom. We've looked very good defensively, though. Oh, I was hoping he could cut that out. See there again. Just going to be sensible here. Nothing silly. Just dinks it in. Yeah. First real opportunity of the game for Lillstrom, and they score. It's 1-0. Kitalano delivers. <laughs> oh, Rakic delivers another one. And Velez drills it home because, again, it's the only way we're scoring goals, apparently, now. It's 2 all. Velez, another one. 12 goals this season he's managed to bag. So he's to find the right pass. And it's Granbeck! Are you kidding me? I'm not even going to provide any analysis, really. It's just, it's 2 all. Uh, Roberto Velez, is, we, that's the only way goals are going in at the moment, no matter how good the chances are. Uh, it's the lower quality ones from corners that we're actually scoring currently. Uh, we deserve to win, but we didn't, and that's nothing new. And with that, the gap is now 10 points. We actually do um, stay above Rosenborg at the very least. So that's really the, the key battle is just trying to stay in front of them. But we've got two really tough games with our final two games of the season. Uh, now, luckily, we've got two slightly easier ones up next. Not that that is actually relevant to us. Um, but yeah, we can't score goals anymore with our actual front then. Um, that seems to be the problem currently. <laughs> Imagine, hey, Berger Hansen, Steinberger Hansen. Oh, what a great piece of finishing. It's 1-0 the Tromsø, and it's Stein at Berger Hansen. The youngster, again, he's getting better and better. His attributes are really climbing. It's 1-0 to Tromsø. Important. Scooping it through for Bamba. He's got runners. One of them is Lee Dilly. Dilly scores. It's 2-0 to Tromsø. Lee Dilly's first goal for the club. He's playing in place of Kawamoto today, who needed a rest. In that position, Lee Dilly can finish chances. We know that anyway, really. Kornich, can he find a good cross in for someone, perhaps? Ball in. Bamba, and it's still not in the net. Scooping one through for Lee Dilly again. He's going to get another chance to score this time. And he's... Oh, it's in. The kid's gone through the keeper's hand. It's 3-0 to Tromsa. Dilly with a brace tonight. That's nice to see him grabbing a couple of goals at least. Might boost his confidence when he moves to the other position again. Well, there we go. 3-0. Had to work for a little bit in the second half. I made a load of subs after the third goal just to sort of kill the game and make sure that we got out of this without any injuries in the end. But Steinberg and Hansen with a goal. Two for Lee Dilly. Uh, really strong performance from the guys there, actually. Nice to see Dilly get a couple of goals here uh, with Kawamoto not being in the squad, proving that he can, in fact, do it. The key thing is, of course, we're second in the group now. Good goal difference. Got the head-to-head -head advantage massively over Spartak Moscow as well. It's looking very good for second place but you never know if we can pull off a miracle in Italy against Napoli then it could still happen for us so I think Stan Mulder are stomping towards a league title and we're just what oh my god what a great header from Planner and now it's 1-0 to Viking here we are just useless at times still a long way to go but lordy lord finds Kawamoto where's the run for Dilly there's the run for Dilly he's in Lee Dilly drills it home there we go his first goal from that position maybe just playing in the other one gave him some confidence Viking one Tromsa one bit of fortune the way it falls to Dilly but that's no more than we deserve on the night oh what a pick up for Cornish. Cornish might get a chance to score here Leo Cornish and Kawamoto on the rebound it's 2-1 to Tromsa Koki Kawamoto hey it's a bit of an open net sometimes you need that and no more than we deserve on the night again really showing a bit of quality to come deep and get this win hopefully can he just draw Drill one in. Dilly. Good touch. Pulls it back. Henriksen. Lovely piece of defensive deep line forward play there from Lee Dilly. Henriksen scores. It's 3-1 Tromsø and we're going to get another deserved victory. Those little changes have definitely improved us, I must say. The little having them shoot less. We're creating more and better quality chances because they're not shooting in weird positions. I'm surprised Dilly didn't shoot there. That's actually brilliant forward play from him. Maybe this is the beginning of him actually settling in to Dilly again. Could he turn provider once more? He's found Kawamoto through the top again. Kawamoto. Wow. It's 4-1. Koki Kawamoto grabs himself another goal and Lee Dilly with his second assist of the night. It's like he's finally settled into this team now and he looks brilliant. So much better from us after falling behind. We showed the quality, dug deep and got the result that we deserved. You can see from our XG output over the last couple of games, ignoring the Skendia one, there's, it's been higher and also better defensively somewhat as well. And I do think that comes from having the slight changes to allow Dilly to shoot a little bit more and 
the changes to our wide center backs. I do wonder if they were just randomly shooting and we weren't seeing it. And now they're recycling the ball a lot more and it seems to be now enabling us to actually play even better. It is a shame as Mold do win the title in the end so far, but we are now three points clear of Starback with a better goal difference to go with it as well and looking really good. We do have to play Starback to come still. Uh, apologies for the snow. Um, wasn't expecting as much. This is the most we've ever had in one of these seasons. And if, it, if I thought there was going to be as much as this, I'd have turned on the blue ball for a bit. But it's, yeah, usually we get like one snow game a season. This is like the fifth one we've already had. Rakic to Jonsson. Round the side for Kawamoto. He's got the whole goal to aim for and he slots it home easily. Tromsa won. Frederick Stadnil, 28th goal of the season for Kawamoto. I'd like 30 out of him in total this year and I'd consider that a job well done. Well, there we go. 1-0 against the bottom club. The defense, the, the attacking output was actually reasonably okay in today's game. Um, didn't really hit the marks, but whatever, we got the win. Uh, defensively, actually did very well to keep out the chances that we did. So in fairness, uh, this was more like a 2-1 than a 1-0, but nevertheless, it's the result. And Mulder did turn it around to win against Rosenborg even better. A couple of little wins and strong performances back-to-back -back have really helped helped us uh well we cannot lo we can no longer finish below third uh, as rosenborg have really slipped off we now trail them but well, they now trail us by seven points and insanely trail molder by a mag magnificent 17 points coming into today's video if i recall rosenborg were what four points behind them and now it's 17 unbelievable rosenborg have been like this all season um but it's starbet the ones we got to worry about really now thankfully we have a better goal difference than them so we still have to play them but should we lose we'd still be in front so as long as we win our other game we're okay psg are interested in koki <sighs> well we, i guess we know who the board are going to sell for no money this summer lovely weather here it's nice to escape the snow for a little bit dearest ball to dilly back it cross and rake it oh it's an easy finish, and it's offside. It's going to be offside, I think. Nope, it's been given. Valdo Bamba has scored a goal in a football match, and admittedly, he had no ability not to. It's a literal open goal. So at least we know he can score those. Bamba, round the side for Lee Dilly. Can he get back to his right foot? He can. Great goal from Lee Dilly. 2-0 to Tromsø. Could make half a yard and slip a nice cross in. We could maybe get a third goal. Dilly! Dilly on the rebound, and it is 3-0, and Lee Dilly scores another one. Remember, just struggling to turn this ball back inside. Here we go. Bamba with space. Can he find the right pass? Oh, lovely little return pass. For oh, what a pick out from Bamba. That's a great pass. Well, there we go. Comfortable 4-0. Bamba, couple for Dilly, one for Steinberg Johansson. Bamba actually had a very good game. A goal and two assists. One of his best games in a Tromsø shirt, you'd argue. So that all but qualifies us, because we've got a better head-to-head -head than Spartak. They'd have to win both their remaining matches, as well as beat us by three goals, which is quite an ask for them, I would say. In addition, though, we've got that game against Napoli to come, and those goals differences if things turn out the way and we level on head-to-head -head, if we win could get very very interesting indeed um this this is gonna this is not over yet Moldor falling up in theirs by the way men making their way through one of them is Valdo Bamba nice near post oh lovely stuff in fact Kawamoto's in there 16 minutes on the clock we need this win this win would wrap up second spot for us because uh Starbeck are away at Frederickstad and this is uh they're gonna win that let's face it this is a good chance for Kawamoto here you know oh it's a great finish 2-0 bottom corner 30th goal of the season for Kawamoto. Back to Jonsson, swips it in, and it's blocked, and it's put over the line by Valdo Bamba, who's playing a striker today for us. 3-0 up against Sarpsborg. Okay, Rakic to fire one in. Velas is in a great position. Oh, it's at the back post, and it's Henrik Solskjaer for 4-0 to Tromsø in the first half. Well, there we go. Work done in the first half. Tromsø 4, Sarpsborg 0. I mean, look at the... Jesus, look at the attacking output in this game. Um, I makes you wonder, actually, if Valdo Bamba could actually do a job as the deep-lying forward instead maybe, because he's got a bit more physical power in that role. And I do wonder if uh, we can get him back for another year, because it'd be probably very cheap, if that wouldn't be the worst idea just for that reason alone, honestly. Kawamoto with a couple of good goals in there too, Solskjaer, but just smash them off the park there, honestly. Fantastic performance. I mean, that was an absolute demolition job, right when we needed it most, just to get that over the line. As it happens, it didn't matter, because Frederick Stubb beat Starbeck. Uh, they've done really well to pull themselves out of what was looking like a desperate hole. They're still bottom, and they will probably finish there, but nevertheless. Uh, we now equal our best ever points tally since we joined the club. And I actually thought that we were having a worse season than that. So if we could beat Starbeck, we could get to the 60 points and just look at that and go, you know what? We've kind of done all we could this season. Uh, I think we've got a lot better and we've actually got to come second by probably six points. Could even be more at the end of things. And I mean, still seven points behind Mulder because they've just had one of those seasons, as you'll see in a bit. So we had £7 million in transfer budget before this, which I chose not to spend because I felt that we needed it most. So basically, they've, I think that's basically the same. They've given me like 200 grand, which honestly, not expecting them to give me huge amounts of money beyond on what they already gave us so that's a good amount of money to work with for next season at the very least to try to patch up the squad and make i don't know not one last go but another crack at it because i do think it's doable i thought this could be the year honestly when we got it out sorted out the koki kawamoto thing there's just been little problems here and there that have kind of stymied us and i do think losing indistad for that period of matches before we kind of settled into a new style 
or got adjusted to it with the new players. The period kind of cost us, and as usual, some bad performances in games that have just slowly caused us to drop off a little bit. That and Mold are doing way better than they should really have any right to be. But there you go. That's what you need to do to win titles. But I don't know how we're going to get that to happen with this team. Valheim, Melkerson, goal. And that's frustrating because that's massively against the run of play. We've actually been really good today and had some good chances and fluffed them all. Uh, shame that. Well, we finished the season with another one of these matches, sadly. Uh, we were quite good. Had some good opportunities for Dilly in this game and he couldn't score them. Could have been 2-0 up and out of sight, really. Uh, strong performance away at Starbeck here. Disappointed. Maybe they kind of felt that they'd already got it done. But Melkerson was able to finish the 1-1 one -on -one, and that was all she wrote, really. Uh, yeah. Kawamoto, 22 goals in the league this season. Rakic with 10 assists, but you can see Indistad, 9 assists in the league. So key to licking things up. Johansson, though, does get 14 assists. So nearly, an ass uh, nearly not assists, clean sheets. So nearly every other game, we kept a clean sheet in, which is very, very impressive from the young man. Uh, at one point, we had like 8 in our first 12. So that's definitely uh, slipped off the radar a little bit there, too. But it's a good season. Only 5 defeats in 30, and it's just... There's just a few too many games in there where we should have got points that we didn't, and... Well, you know what they are, really. It's... it's broken record at this point but we'll look at the stats uh, i think this is where it's most stark honestly uh 58.1 points so we do underperform ever so slightly uh the goals again minus six it's definitely the best we've had on that one since the start of the save um 60.6 xg over the full season is ridiculous honestly well done the guys it's the best we've the closest we've come to it we didn't let it slip too far but still it's the fact is we were comfortably the best side in the league on those things, but Mulder did what they needed to do. They scored more goals and outperformed themselves massively, both defensively and going forward, and garnered 11 points more than they potentially could have done. And without that, we're champions. But you can't rely on things like that. And I don't know what more we can do when every year we're sort of hitting our marks, for the most part, overall, although slightly lower this year. And a team will just come out there and do a season like that. But that's what you need to win. And I don't know how we get our players to do that. Oh, we're back for Blad now. If this turns into a goal, we've had about 30 passes. Dilly! Oh my goodness. Tromsa won. Spartak nil. Lee Dilly with the goal. But we... I, I say 30 passes. It was about 60 passes in that play. 1-0. Rakic, tons of room. One through for Kawamoto. Slots it bottom corner. It's 2-0 to Tromsa. 31 goals this season for Kawamoto. And we are surely now going to the next round. But it depends what happens in Italy if we win the group or not. Ignashevic? Oh my goodness. What a goal for Issa Ignashevic. Uh, Spartak Moscow back in the match out of absolute... Absolutely nothing, but that is some hit. Pings one over the top for Kawamoto. Can he finish this time? Of course he can. It's 3-1 to Tromsa. Koki Kawamoto, 32nd goal of the season for him, and he seems to have found his feet again, finally. Well, there we go. Nice and cushy. 3-1 to Tromsa. Um... Yeah, pretty much standard stuff. Dilly, Kawamoto, grabbing the goals again. Lovely to see. Unfortunately for us elsewhere, Napoli beats uh, <laughs> Skendia 7-1 in their game. But we've managed to get four wins out of five in our group. And honestly, we should have beaten Napoli as well. That's the most annoying thing. We can still do it, potentially, were we to go to Italy and grab ourselves a victory. But it's been, all in all, a very strong group. And we've earned nearly two million quid from the wins as well. Fantastic stuff. Uh, Bamba's broken his collarbone. <laughs> and they've recalled him. Oh, God. Oh, I had such plans for you, Valdo. Such plans. This is it. It's been a bit of a roller coaster today, and I realize it's been a long one, and it started off in the worst way possible. I feel like it's just got slowly, progressively, progressively better uh, mentally since then, I suppose. It's going to be a lot of work over the winter period to try to rebuild this team a little bit with some players leaving. We'll have some spaces to join. We're going to have to hunt for some... We're going to have to basically try to pillage some players from the other teams in this league to get some homegrown talent coming into this club because it's very difficult to sign all the cool players I've found unless we have some of that homegrown talent as a base, and that's definitely going to cause problems for us, but we're going to have to see. Now with Bamber out, out as well i i don't know and obviously there's a few loans that will depart us too so that will leave us some spaces but we've got money at the very least it's just gonna be so difficult to compete with molder because they're magic <laughs> so we'll have to see nice and easily uh now obviously bamba's not here anymore so grunbeck's gonna be straight into that role as well dilly and kawamoto that's fine we've had a nice two-week rest now so everybody's kind of good to go uh pretty much as strong as possible really i'll put reading on on the bench as i always do now you'll see this better when you look at the schedule uh, after this match uh, and you can really see it's around the sort of time that indistad was sold we did manage to win that game against rosenborg which was somewhat against the run of play anyway and resulted from the two corner goals but it was around that time really that we just stopped being able to get goals from our front line and there was about a four or five six game period where that really just killed our season really uh losing Indistad at that moment the, the board basically cost us the title in many ways with that kind of stuff um because that's when the form really hit rock bottom for a point and once we recovered we've been great since then with the exception of maybe uh that game against uh Starbeck but that was a tough match towards the top of the league it was all the stuff before that that we'd really got back on track and then yeah it was just too little too late at that point but you know the board only have themselves to blame for that really so all it would take right now biuk oh bit of space freed up there shakur omar good save again from johansson looks like it's gonna be a tough evening for us here and i think even if we were to win this one nil we'd go 
second due to the overall goal difference. Grumbeck, though. Can he pull it back? Oh, he's gone for goal. So far, though, very even here in Italy. Biuk. Oh, my God. <laughs> Stipe Biuk, 1-0 Napoli. Never mind the evenness when they can crack those out. Um, admittedly, we've scored a few of those ourselves this season. Yeah, the game was very close up until Napoli's goal. Uh, and we haven't had a shot since then, unfortunately, and it's just looking a bit eh now. Has we won it back though? We have Kawamoto, Rakic, Jesse Rakic over the bar. Ventura dinks it short. That's fine, actually. We could go for a breakaway here. Rakic to Jonsson. There's bodies forward. Look at the space through the middle. Oh, if he oh he's found him. He's found him. Kawamoto with a chance here. He's on his correct foot. Dinks the keeper, and it is going to be one all here in Italy. Napoli won, Tromsø won, 33 goals this season for Kawamoto. Well, we've absolutely caught them on the break. I've turned it on to dribble less often, and I wonder if that could be a key for us, because a lot of our good play comes from good passing, and I wonder if we just focus on passing the ball more rather than running with it aimlessly, we could create more chances like this, and it's a great goal for Kawamoto. Going along again. Kawamoto will bring this out the air. They've allowed it. Ball through. Lee Dilly. Oh, it's offside, is it? It's Napa. It's, I don't know. We're going to have to see here. I think that one is offside. Oh, it's go. <laughs> we go top of the group. Napoli one, Tromsø two. Oh my goodness. Maybe that pass less at uh, the dribble less often is going to work for us here. It's a great finish from Lee Dilly. Napoli one, Tromsø two. Oh, those of you that stuck around at the end. Hopefully this will be a, a reward for that. Maybe it's just going to allow us to release the passes quicker or something. <laughs> we might have accidentally stumbled on something that could work for us. I'm not trying to do anything silly. Leah Stewart drives what I mean that was the something silly there really wasn't it <laughs> that's potentially where this could call, catch us out but there was still better passing options on than that one and this is going to be straight across goal isn't it oh good save they're getting very aggressive now we've got to make sure we're covering off oh -ho -ho! we're gonna do it we're gonna do it we have 10 seconds Napoli one Tromsø two we're gonna to come to Italy win against Napoli and win the group in so doing and get to skip a round of qualification, not qualification, skip a round of the knockouts for next season. This is going to be one of the biggest wins of this save, honestly. After a disappointing season in places, this win could change everything for us, honestly, because it might well have unveiled. There we go. Napoli won, Tromsø 2. <laughs> Lucky to win. We did not deserve it, but we took our chances and the changes we made made a huge difference to that, I think. And we should have won the home game against them, honestly. So I think it kind of balances out. I think, you know, um, wow. Absolutely stupendous work from the guys there. Kawamoto and Dilly's goals win in Napoli. And with that, we win the group by virtue, I assume, of the head-to-head. -head. I think there is maybe an away goals in the head-to-head, -head, maybe. And that's because of the two goals today. I think that's the only thing I can assume it is. There's an away goal within the head-to-head. -head, that that's why we've managed to win the group there with 15 points. Five wins out of six in a group that had Napoli in. Come on! Also, Lan beat Young Boys 5-0. And Brighton lost to Apple on Limassol. Now, with that, of course, it means there won't be a draw today because there is no draw to happen because we're not actually going to be in the draw. Napoli are. So we've managed to bypass a round of the Europa Conference. I can't believe we won that group. It was around here, though. You can see. So it was just here um, towards the end of August. We actually had a few struggling games in there in fairness as well. Um, but it was here when we lost Indistad, roughly around this point here. And we got lucky against Rosenborg and Spartak were a much weaker side. But you can see that it definitely affected us in the league. And it wasn't really until... Lilstrom when I made that slight switch that we started to look a bit better again and it certainly seems to have made a difference for us now I do wonder if the passing less will allow us to do even more sorry not passing less dribbling less will allow us to knock the ball around a bit more and find those passes quicker to open up spaces that could be the key for us and it really it dropped out or, or, or our strikers out of form that was what really happened in that period I would say uh, our strikers just lost the plot and well I mean it wasn't until Lielstrom, really, even that was a bit fortunate that we started looking a bit better. I'm still happy with the way the season's gone. I think next year, though, we have got big work to do, but I do wonder if this could be the final piece of the puzzle tactically for us that will allow us to create even more chances. Anyway, if you've enjoyed this episode, and I really hope you have, drop a like on the video. That would be stupendous. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That would be gorgeous, too. I stream on Twitch Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays, and, well, I mean, next video is going to be an insane one as well, because we've got transfer window, where we try to spend this money, and somewhere in there as well there's going to be Europa Conference League knockouts against someone who we don't even know yet because the draw hasn't happened and won't do for many many months I'll see you soon hold your gun capybara bye bye